expanded consciousness. This is kind of a misleading term, really, because consciousness is always infinite. It's always fully expanded. Awareness, consciousness is always fully expanded. It's infinite, eternal. You can't get any more expanded than that. And it's always that way. What, what expands and contracts is our attention. So it's important to, to understand the difference between consciousness, awareness, and attention. Awareness is always aware of everything. And by everything, I mean everything, everything, not just what's going on in your life, not just what's going on in this planet or this solar system or this universe or all the universes. It's aware of all of that all the time. But our attention contracts and expands. It's very flexible. It's very easy for it to do this. And uh, a few days ago, a woman came to me with, um, you know, for some help and advice and things like that. And uh, she said that she had been in a eagle's eye view before for weeks when she first contacted me. She was in eagle's eye view. But then over the last week, she had sort of come down to this very narrow way of seeing things and, and was experiencing problems and suffering and challenges and difficulties again. When she was in the eagle's eye view, she wasn't. She took everything kind of lightly and as a sense of humor. And when she was in this more contracted point of view, there were a lot of problems. And this is the way it is. When attention comes down, it, it's like the saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. In other words, you focus on one tree or a couple of trees and you're not aware that there's a whole forest here, that they're part of a whole forest. You don't see the big picture. You don't see what she called the eagle's eye view. The eagle's eye view sees everything. And when you see everything, what's going on in the world with the COVID-19 coronavirus, with your own life, with, with, with what's going on, you see the big picture and everything is understandable. From the big picture, it all makes sense. All the pieces are put together and you see how they go together. You may not see this mentally because the mind is extremely limited, whereas consciousness is not. Awareness is not. Awareness, consciousness is infinite and your mind is extremely limited. So it's not going to be able to absorb all the things that consciousness and awareness can. Right? Consciousness and awareness are infinite. How could the mind understand what awareness understands? How could the mind understand what consciousness understands? That's why I say that when, when you accept that the mind is limited, that the mind doesn't know, that it doesn't really know anything, and you fully accept that, you, you're not so attached to your thoughts in your mind anymore. You can let that attachment go. And when you let that attachment go, your attention automatically expands out back to your true nature as consciousness awareness. And then you do know. You just don't know in a mental way. It's a different kind of knowing. You have the knowing that consciousness awareness has because that is your true nature. You always have that. And there is no confusion or questions in this. There's just this knowing. Everything makes perfect sense. You understand everything from this big perspective. Eagle's eye view is like looking down on the world, looking down on your life, looking down on, you know, the things that are going on in this world. It, it, as one example, someone said the other day that, um, this is very practical, by the way. You know, my advice to her is like, you always want to, have your attention at least partly on this expanded consciousness, this eagle eye view. At least 10% needs to always be there because otherwise you're just going to get lost in your thoughts. Otherwise you're just going to get lost in the details. Otherwise you're just going to get lost looking at the tree and thinking that that's the whole forest when it's not. You know, if you look at just the tree and the tree is, is dying, you can be very upset. Oh no, the tree is dying. But you're not aware that there's, there's thousands of trees and some of them are just growing. 
you know, and they'll take the place of that tree that's dying. You know, that's the big picture. But when you're lost in, in this very limited attention, this extremely limited attention, you're weeping over the death of this one tree without realizing from the big picture, but of course it's going to die. All trees die and trees are born, just like humans. Humans die and humans are born. This is the big picture. This is what's really going on in the world. And it, when you get limited to one thing, you think, no, it's not supposed to be. That tree should never die. You know, that person should never die. I should never die. You're confused because your attention is so limited, so riveted to this one thing. Your attention is so limited and squeezed down that you can't see the big picture. But of course, your, your ability to expand your attention out again is, is also infinite. It's not a hard thing to do. <laughs> you do this all the time. You know, your attention moves all the time. If you went into the doctor's office because you, you'd broken your leg and your leg was in great pain, say your knee, and your knee was in great pain, say it was your left knee, and your right foot was sort of hanging out, you were sitting in a chair waiting to go into the emergency room, and a person walked by and stepped on your right foot. Suddenly your attention is on that right foot, isn't it? It's no longer on the pain in your knee, it's just immediately on your right foot. Attention moves very fluidly, flexibly, and instantly. And so it can move from expanded consciousness or expanded attention back to your full consciousness or close to it also instantly. So you can keep that there while you're dealing with the issues in, in the world. If someone comes to you with a problem, with some suffering, you don't want to just be the bird's eye view and say, oh, it's just one person out of, out of billions. And this is, you know, it's like, yes, that's true. But you also want to focus totally on that person's story, completely aware, which can be awareness is both inside that person and outside. So you bring your attention so fully that you're feeling their suffering. You're feeling what they're saying just as they are exactly in the same way. If they have pain, you feel that pain. Your attention is fully on them, but it doesn't lose this. There's at least 10% of it. It's still here because if it's not, when this person tells you their story of their suffering, you're going to be so, you're going to be overwhelmed just as they are. You're going to start weeping and crying. Yes, the world is terrible. Everything is so unfair. You're going to do the same thing that she's doing and you can't be of any help to her in that way. She can feel like, oh, at least somebody shares my misery. That's about it. You know, what good does that really do her? But when you have the big picture, you see the whole thing, the whole thing, and you're not overwhelmed. You feel everything that she's feeling. You're completely there for her, but you're also aware of the whole picture. And that's how you can help. You can only help by being aware of the full picture and not being lost in the details, because when you're lost in the details, essentially you're lost in an illusion and a fantasy, a very limited and distorted fantasy. So you always have to see this big picture this big picture. And just as an, a little experience for you right now to, to do this, to feel this, because it's not enough to understand this mentally, but that's good. At least that will give you the intention to bring your attention out, to expand your attention out, further out towards your natural self, to your natural self, and not get so lost in the details that you forget that. You know, that you forget, like, I'm having a terrible problem in my life, and you forget that there's also, you know, billions of other humans that are also going through suffering, also going through the problem. Some of them far worse than yours, some of them not as bad. But you're, you're, you're a human being out of billions of human beings. And you're connected to all of them. You're not separate from any one of them. And immediately when you see that big picture, your own personal problems are relieved. This is why Tonglen works so well. When you do the practice of Tonglen, the Tibetan 
meditative practice of Tonglen, you invite in the suffering of other beings. You forget about your own suffering and you invite in the suffering of other beings. It could begin with your own suffering. So you have this connection because you know with billions of people, there's got to be hundreds of thousands or millions that are experiencing whatever suffering you're experiencing at exactly the same time. <laughs> so you acknowledge that and you invite their suffering into you and you send healing to them. And after a short time, you feel completely connected and one with all of them. And then you keep expanding that to people that are suffering from other things, people that have you know, mothers that have lost their children, people that are dying alone in hospital beds, athletes that have lost their ability to walk, you know, all these different things and things that people have suffering for you invite all their suffering into you and you send healing to them. And then you begin with the other species and you bring all their suffering into you and you send healing to them. And pretty soon, you feel completely connected and one with all beings in the entire universe. And that feels incredibly good. It doesn't matter what your suffering was before. There is no better feeling than, than this feeling of oneness because this is truth. And this is expanded attention. You see, your attention is expanded out to your consciousness, to consciousness, not yours, but consciousness itself. And that's truth. And that feels wonderful. And now you understand everything. Suffering of all beings and your own suffering. You understand it perfectly. And it doesn't overwhelm you anymore. It doesn't cause you suffering. It doesn't cause you grief. You just see it as it is. You hold it as it is. All right. So I promise that to give you a little experience of an expansion of consciousness. And I've done this with you before, if you've seen me. And um, this is just to be aware of space. So right now in your room, wherever you're watching this from, there's space, isn't there? Something that you don't really notice. In between you and the device that you're looking on, there's space. Around you, there's space. In between every object that you can see in your room, there's space, isn't there? In between every object, there's space. Something we don't usually pay attention to. But now I'm asking you to pay attention to that space rather than the objects. Whatever you're watching this on, pay attention to the space in between you and that object. More than the object, more than me. The space in between. The space in between that objects and the other objects the space in between you and the other objects, right? You can feel this space. If this is challenging for you, you can do this little simple exercise is hold your hands in front of you like this, and then slowly move them back to the sides of your head. So that with your peripheral vision, you can just see them, just see them with your peripheral vision and look straight ahead, but use your peripheral vision to look at your hands and focus on your hands. This will give you this 180 degree of space. And what you're looking at straight ahead may become a little blurry because you're not focusing on that anymore. You're focusing on, the, on everything, the whole 180 degrees. So this too is expanding your attention to something that you're not usually aware of, the space. And this space, as you begin to feel it, not just see it in between things, see the absence of things in between that space, not just see this, but feel it, right? If you're aware of it, you can't help but feel it. If your attention is on it, you can't help but feel it. And it's something that you might not have been feeling before that there's space in this room. It's filled with space. And because you can feel it, the space is also in you. Where are you feeling it? In you, in your body. You feel space in here and you also feel it out there. It's the same space, the space you're feeling inside and the space in the room. And the words inside and outside begin to dissolve too. And you become aware that those are also limitations. 
that there's more than that. Those are artificial limitations inside and outside. The space inside and outside is the same space. And if you feel this, and you do, don't you? Now your attention has expanded to include space. Very simple. Space has always been here. It's just that you haven't paid attention to it before. And as your attention is expanding out, you're aware of more. You're not just aware of space. You're more aware of the objects too, more aware of you, but in a different way. Because this, this object, this body is sitting in space. Space is inside and outside. Space is actually in the molecules that make up this body in between the cells. There's space everywhere. In fact, if you know anything about physics, it's mostly space. All that we see as solid matter is mostly empty space. And to call it empty space is not true either. Space isn't empty at all. But we can't say what it's full of either. But if we really feel space, we know it's not empty. It's not a void. It's completely full. So this feeling of space is very calming to us because mostly our attention is so riveted and focused down on this very, very limited things that we're not aware of the space. We're not aware of what we are. We're not aware of awareness, we're not aware of consciousness. We're not really aware of the world. And we can get very confused in that state, we have a lot of problems and suffering when we see in such a limited way. That's why it's so important to keep this wider attention, to keep this bird's eye view, to be able to see the the big picture, to be able to see the whole picture. So as I was saying before about this uh, COVID-19 thing, we have, uh, there's so much misunderstanding, so many conspiracy theories, so many people, because their, their consciousness, their, their attention is focused so narrowly that they can't see the big picture. When I first heard about COVID-19, the first thing that interested me was what does epidemiolo what do epidemiologists who are experts on this have to say about it? So one of the first things I saw was a video from an epidemiologist explaining about viruses and how they spread and how this one spreads. And that's sort of what stayed with me. That's a big picture looking at it to understand how this happens. So the other day, Someone said, uh, we're opening the economy and, and look, it hasn't had any bad effects, right? You know, we've opened the economy for a week and look, there's no, the deaths haven't increased dramatically, nothing's happened. And that's such a limited view. They, they don't understand the virus. They don't understand how it spreads. They don't understand really anything. And they're basing their lack of understanding is what they're basing that on. They're basing it on their lack of understanding. They're basing it on this limited view. They're basing it on their own ignorance. And other people are saying, yes, it's true. Look, the statistics haven't gone up a lot after a week. But of course, of course not. It takes at least two months to find out how this opening will be affected. But if you know anything, if you've looked at epidemiology and learned anything about it, even in the simplest way, the mathematical way, you understand that it's not a good idea, is it? This is a virus that spreads, has a, a, a spread factor of three. The average flu has a spread factor of 1.1. And even that 1.1, look how many people get the flu. That 0.1 
added to one makes a huge difference. But three is more than that, isn't it? So one person, one asymptomatic person has no symptoms because you don't. That's the other danger of this one is that you don't show any symptoms for a week to two weeks. You have no idea that you have this virus and during that time you're spreading it at a factor of three. So you have it and now three other people have it. If you go any place with other people, you're not wearing a mask, you're not social distancing. Now three other people have it and they're also asymptomatic. Even if they get symptoms, still for a week to two weeks, they're not showing any symptoms. They have no idea that they have it and they're spreading it to three people and so on. And some people remain asymptomatic for 30 days, right? They don't, they never get any symptoms, but during that whole time, they're spreading the virus and that's how it spreads exponentially by a factor of three. A factor of three is an enormous factor, really, when you think about it. If you understand anything about mathematics, a factor of three is an enormous factor. One person spreads it to three people, and each of those three people spread it to three people, and each of those three people spread it to three people. And this, this, is an, this has an enormous spread. That's why it's such a contagious virus. Not just the danger of it, because some people die from it. It can be far more powerful than the flu. I had it. I've never experienced anything like this before. It was very, very powerful. It just knocked me off my feet for three weeks. I've, ne I've never had anything like that before. The flu only lasts me for a day, two days at the most. And after two days, it's like it, it never was. I'm totally back. But in this case, I had this very strongly, a very strong fever for a week. And then for three weeks after, two weeks anyways, I was too weak to really do the things that I normally do. It took two weeks to recover. But if you understand the epidemiology of it, you see how viruses spread and how they're, how people get it. You know, it's not just, you know, people are walking around, breathing is enough. If somebody breathes the virus out and you walk through as much as 30 minutes later through that place where you don't see them anymore, they've already left the store and you walk through that, you can get the virus from that. So it's highly contagious. It spreads at a factor of three. And it can be very dangerous to, to many people. So I know that a lot of people, if you have this limited consciousness and you can't see the big picture, you can just choose whatever facts you want. You know, I'm hearing that there's no problem. And so here in Sedona, there, there's stores and things where people have stopped wearing masks, stopped wearing gloves, stopped social distancing. They're just back to the way things were as if there never was a virus. If you understand anything about epidemiology, even though it's the most basics that I understand, then you also understand that that's not a good idea, is it? But if you have this very limited attention, then you can just pick whatever facts you want. You know, open up the churches, no, nothing's gonna happen, or God will save them all, and, and they'll all be protected, as one pastor said, you know, who died two weeks later of the COVID coronavirus. If you have this very limited perspective, you get confused. In your own life, you know, and many people are confused like this because they don't have this wide attention as you just had when you became aware of, a, of space, when your attention went to space. Most people are not aware of space at all, but now you are, you know what that feels like. Your attention is expanded to include more. And the more your attention expands to include, the more you'll be able to see the big picture, the less you'll suffer, and the more you'll understand. It's extremely practical. Yes, this leads to awakening. Yes, this leads to enlightenment, to the realization that you are this infinite space. You are this infinite awareness. And nothing is separate from this infinite awareness.
But even before that, even without that full awakening to this, <clears throat> the more your attention expands, the easier your life will be, the more intelligent you'll be, the more intelligent you'll be able to deal with your life, the less confused you'll be and the less suffering you'll have. You can feel it from the space, can't you? Just from expanding to being aware of space. There's less suffering, there's less contraction into poor little me, you know, poor little limited me that has these problems and doesn't know how to solve them. When you bring space in and you're aware of that too, it's like, oh, there's me and space. Yes, that's here too. And suddenly that problem doesn't seem so overwhelming anymore. And if you expand your, your attention even more, you can see how it all fits together. You, your life, the things that you do, how they impact everything else in life and everyone else in life and everything else in life how everything is connected, everything is part of this. A butterfly flaps its wings in South Saharan Africa and a hurricane happens off the coast of Florida. It's all connected. Nothing is not connected. But when you have this limited point of view, you pull these different things, and this is how conspiracy theories begin. You pull these little facts and you stick them together as if that's all there was. And you're missing the big picture. No, everything is connected. Every single thing is connected. Those few strands that you put together are just part of everything. But you're not going to get so bent out of shape about them when you understand that everything is connected. You just see that that's the way it is. It's more than your mind can latch on to, more than your mind can obsess over, more than your mind can create conspiracy theories out of. Because everything is connected. Everything is one. You are not separate from anything. And instead of feeling all upset and, and attached and obsessed about these things, you feel a great sense of peace a great sense of understanding, a great sense of contentment, a great sense of love, and a true wisdom. A true wisdom. It doesn't come from piecing different facts or pieces of evidence together. You don't need to do that. You have the infinite evidence, the evidence of all beings, of all creation, all together, simultaneously as one. And that can't help but lead to a feeling of great peace, great understanding, great wisdom. And the wonderful thing is, this is your nature. This is your true self. This is your true being. And when you expand your attention, when you open your attention up to more, you become more in touch with this, with your true nature, with your true being, with the essence of what you are. Thank you, my friend. I hope you feel this. And even this space practice brings you closer to this. Anything that you include, anything that you open to, brings you more in touch with your true nature, which is everything. Thank you, my friend. Many blessings to you. Much love.